Hi, I'm Frances Proctor, otherwise known as Angel Eyes Online. Today I'm going to show you a quick and easy method of creating fancy photo edges in Designer Pro X and Photo and Graphics Designer 2013. I'll cover creating a mask and applying it to your photo, and how to edit the mask right on the photo. As a bonus, I'm offering a free set of vector masks at TalkGraphics.com. You'll find the link for this in the video description. So are you ready? Let's get started. Okay, now here we are and I've got the photo we're going to mask. And I'm just going to pull this down and to begin with I'm going to draw a simple black rectangle and I'm going to make this so that it's going to be just a little bit bigger than my photo. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to grab the eraser tool. And you can see I've already got it set at a softness of 200, 200%. That's as high as it'll go. And a nice big eraser, the big one, 100 screen pixel. So now I'm just going to simply erase out a nice soft area in the middle of the rectangle. Now we don't want to get too close to the edges and if you do that you can simply hold down shift and just draw back in and we'll just do like that. Now the shift shortcut I should say only works in Designer Pro X because basically it takes you to the shape builder tool. If you're using Page and Graphic Designer 2013 you will have to undo and erase again. Okay now there's my erased out mask. Now I'm going to create some bubbles. So to do that, I'm going to select the ellipse tool. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to make, whoops, deselect that. I'm going to make the ellipses white. Because basically what I'm doing here is I'm working as a reverse image and everything that is either erased out or white will when the mask is applied to the photo be the areas where your photo will show through and be opaque. The black areas will be where the photo will be transparent. So now what I'm going to do here is I am going to use the transparency tool and I'm going to give this a circular transparency and I'm just going to swap the center fill so it's transparent in the middle and opaque around the edges. Now I'm going to pull this out a little bit more and then what I'm going to do is just go up here and adjust the profiles. Let's bring that center out a bit more. That looks good and I'm just going to move this up this way a bit more. We'll pull that out. All right. You can play with your bubbles to make them look how you want. Now I'm going to give the bubble a highlight, but as you remember before, I'm working in reverse, so I want the highlight to be black. So as I've got Designer Pro X, I'm going to use the Shape Builder tool with a nice high softness and I'm going to give this a black highlight. If you're using Page and Graphics Designer 2013 you could draw a shape with the freehand tool and give it a feathering to create your highlight. So let's just paint this highlight on right about there. And like I said we want to make this highlight black. 
So that's our bubble. Now what I'm going to do is select the whole bubble and go Control G to group. I'm going to pull the size of that bubble down because we don't need it that big. And I'm just going to start putting these bubbles on the mask. Now I want to keep them so they are make some bubbles of some different sizes and just maybe I'll overlap these ones make another one here, I'll make it even smaller and I'm going to arrange them all around the edges of the, the of the mask and we'll speed that process up through the miracle of photo editing. Okay, there now we've got them all around the edge of the mask. And I think I'm just going to uh, select on the re mask rectangle here and I'm just going to pull this side out just a bit just to kind of even it up. And that looks good to me. <coughs> now I'm going to simply group this mask using Control G again. And that's pretty much basically all there is to create in the mask. And to apply it to the photo is really simple. I'm just going to bring it up here now and I'm going to put it over the photo. I'm going to align the mask now to the photo. And this is one of the reasons why I made it a bit bigger and I made it, I kept the bubbles away from the edges a bit here to make, give us a bit of room around the edges so that we can completely block off all the edges of the photo and you get a cleaner result. Now, here's the magic. I'm simply going to cut this to the clipboard, Control X, and I'm going to right click on the photo, select paste, and paste opacity mask. And there you go. That's all there is to it. Gives your photos a whole new look. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to edit a mask that's already applied to a photo. Now over here, I have a photo, the same photo actually, with a mask applied to it. And over here in the page and layer gallery, you can see I've got this, this photo expanded in the gallery and you can see this one's a little bit more complicated than the bubbles one and I've got a couple of different opacity mask groups in, in here. What you need to do is to drill down into the opacity mask that masks out the center of the shape which in this case is this one here. Now I'm going to go back up here to the eraser tool and I'm going to adjust the eraser tool here and I'm going to, you can see I've adjusted the settings and I'm still kind of playing around with them here. All right, and then I'm just going to simply, with that selected, go back in with the eraser tool and I can actually bring this up to create areas here that are a little bit more opaque than they were before. Maybe fill in some areas around here. And I'm going to zoom in here on on this and I'm going to show you another little trick. You can see down here where in the photo there's this little 
plant or this little bush. And it kind of looks here already like it's coming out over the lines of the mask. So I'm going to take my little eraser tool here. I'm going to drop down the size of the eraser and I'm going to just fill these in here a bit more. Make these area more opaque and it will kind of add to the illusion that this bush is kind of coming out more and almost give it an out of bounds appearance. And maybe I'll just bring it out over here a little bit more too on this side. Now if you've got Designer Pro X, there's a bit more you can do. You can hold down the Shift tool which takes you into the Shape Builder tool and we can actually clean the photo up in these different areas. And I think I'm going to just drop the softness down a bit for doing this and maybe increase the size of this. And again, hold shift. Yeah, there we go. And I can actually clean these areas up. And because I'm working on this object down here and I'm not touching these, I can do this quite easily without affecting these lines. And I think I'm going to just go there, tie that up a bit there too. Go up in here, between here. And I'm just going to go over here and clean some of this up. And as you can see, it really makes it handy to be able to edit your masks to actually conform to the photos that you're, you're masking. It really makes a difference. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.